Our final category of ratios or financial indicators are stability. And basically they look at the concept that how does someone go broke? Basically because we end up with negative owner's equity. So take if we had assets of 100,000, we know the accounting equation says liabilities plus owner's equity must equal that number. So if I had liabilities of 110,000, that means I actually owe more for my assets than they're actually worth. And my owner's equity would be negative $10,000. So fundamentally, that is when you go broke. In other words, when your assets are less than your liabilities, you are mathematically uh, broke. So to take an example um, of how we can prevent that happening, we like to buy assets, so in this case, $200,000 of JB Hi-Fi shares. And we've done that with $150,000 loan and $50,000 of our own cash. So in this case, our asset would be $200,000 of JB Hi-Fi shares. We've had to borrow $150,000 from the bank, which is a liability and the owner's equity is 50,000. So ideally, the value of our assets goes up over time. So if those shares went up to 250,000, the asset goes up. The bank doesn't want any more money back, they just want their 150, so that stays the same. And what will happen is our equity has gone up to 100,000, given that assets must always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So that's the ideal situation. What about when it doesn't go to plan? So we buy a $900,000 house, which is an asset, we borrow $800,000 to do it, which is a liability, and we use $100,000 of our own money, which is our equity. If there's a property crash and the value of the house goes down to $600,000, well, the bank doesn't suddenly turn around and go, just pay us back the six hundred. dollars They still want their $800,000. So what we've got there is a liability staying at eight hundred, dollars and that must mean our equity actually becomes negative $200,000. So we will never, uh, by the time we've paid off this house, it will actually be valued for less than we've paid for it, which means we've got negative owner's equity. So this all relates to the concept of stability. It looks at the long-term financial structure of the ability by sort of looking at its debt and the amount of financial risk it has. So a stability ratio to define it analyzes the financial stability and level of financial risk being taken on by the business. Now, there's only one ratio we need to calculate. It's called the debt ratio. We can also refer to it as gearing.